guys welcome back to my channel we are gonna be chatting today i wanted to make this episode more of a conversation i'm gonna open it up to any women that want to hit me up directly or if you want to publicly comment uh, that's cool too i want it to be something that we talk about i want people to give me their own experiences as well as any advice i've gotten to know my body very well in the past few years going through the process of motherhood and also beginning my journey with fitness. I've only been in, into fitness for about two years now. I'm a rookie. I'm just getting my beak wet a little bit. Make sure and check with your doctor uh, or your primary care physician that whatever you're gonna do is good for you, especially if you're a mom that's recovering from pregnancy. So, number one thing. Yes, I was pregnant. I hid my pregnancy from the world. <laughs> for a very long time it was a basketball i hid my pregnancy for a very long time there's a lot of reasoning behind that i feel like the social media platform that i have on instagram is mainly geared towards my shell it's a positive one if i am containing myself to one dimension right um i've even gotten some of those comments on here I already had racist um, misogynistic comments people that are basically upset that I've shown that I have a family and that I have a daughter and that her father is black I am a Hispanic woman my father is a brown-skinned man I myself am not white the racist comments I don't know like what do you guys what what so let me make one thing clear I made this YouTube not with the intention to gain a million subscribers overnight I wanted a space that I can be my shell, my spirit, and my personality all in one. I wanted a place where I could show all of them together. I just want a space to be me. It's, it's right up there on the banner. Be directed to read. It's up there. I appreciate all the male figures that are following, subscribing, and commenting and are respectful and can still admire me without needing that weird fantasy that like I belong to them GET AWAY FROM HER! SHE'S MINE! to be able to support me on, on these kinds of platforms anyway, back to the subject I was pregnant so here I was six months actually this is one of the last posts that I had on Instagram before I just completely went missing completed my pregnancy you know, it's a big difference the Adidas fitting room photo I was about seven months, close to eight. I ended up having her early. I do have what is called a didolphus uterus. There are severe cases and not so severe cases, women who have easy births, women who it's almost impossible to get pregnant. I was somewhere in between. By 34 weeks, I couldn't feel her move. I talked about this on the podcast in one of the episodes. You should check it out because I go more in depth on the whole process, but couldn't feel her move, went to the hospital. Fast forward, I end up having to have an emergency C-section after I think like 18 hours of being in the hospital. It was scary. Her cord was wrapped around her neck twice. We were both in critical condition. It was really scary and the recovery was way more difficult than I imagined it would be. I remember looking in the mirror and my waist, for me who had always had a 24-25, I didn't know myself and I know that sounds so superficial, but I know women, you're going to understand me. My therapist says that that is our downfall as women, that we rely so heavily for self-fulfillment through our looks because the inevitable is that at some point we will get old, we will age. Now my goal is to just be physically fit. I've learned that from different trainers where they tell me that the goal is not to be strong or to look a certain way. The goal is to be good with movements, to have agility, to be healthy, to feel healthy, to feel your best. So I guess in a sense, it is about how you look because for me, my journey began because I was unhappy with how I looked. I considered getting lipo. My partner made it evident to me that he had seen my natural body and that he believed in my ability to get myself back to a place that I would not only be satisfied with but I would be proud of because it was going to be he said his actual words were your body will be better than it ever was because you'll actually have to work for it I don't know why I'm sitting like this but it's kind of comfortable in a weird way I have like one leg up for people who have followed me for a really long time I always had pear shape I've just always been very slim hippie 
not really like a big projection in the butt i could find a way back to my natural state and then add to that meaning like growing my glutes toning my thighs because i always had thick thighs but after pregnancy they were cellulite ridden which is not bad this is a body positive place guys i'm not saying any of that is bad because i still have cellulite i promise you it's there. I just found myself in a place that I, I wanted to feel proud of what I had. You know what I mean? And I just wasn't because it was so, so, so adamantly different than what I had before. I tried diets. I did cleanses. I tried to remove certain things from my diet, gluten, all this stuff. And then I tried intermittent fasting. I began to see a slight difference. That was the first time. That was around like eight months postpartum. Then there was a day, I can attribute it to being very busy, that I didn't really eat much at all. I was drinking water, I was staying hydrated, but I didn't eat much at all. And then the next day I woke up and I noticed my face looked different. This is to the eye. I looked different. I just looked less bloated. In my head I was like, oh my god, what the hell is going on? There are different articles. There's health benefits to it. And that's what I've had. Different doctors reach out to me on Instagram when they see that I am encouraging people to fast. As Americans specifically, I feel like we overindulge in food. And I'm not saying that, you know, starving yourself is the key, but that's the point. You're not starving yourself. This is a one to two day thing. For me, it was a jump start. That day that I didn't eat, and the morning after, I felt like my body was reset. Again, I, please, this is a disclaimer. I'm not a doctor. I don't know the science behind what I'm saying, but this is the truth. After I fasted that day, I felt like there was something in my metabolism that kick-started. I have a hyperthyroid. It is in remission at the moment, but I know what it's like to feel when my metabolism is at an all-time high. It felt like that was like, jump started. From that point forward, I made it a habit to, on my busiest day of the week, kind of try to fast. Not kind of, fast. Now, being that I do have upper body days and core days, I will try to correlate them because I'm overjoyed with the progress that I've made. But I do still feel like I have a layer of fat over my abs that I never did. And I know that's going to come because I'm trying to grow my glutes. And on the days that I'm not fasting, I don't exactly withhold myself from indulging. If I go out to a restaurant, I'm going to eat the mashed potatoes. I'm going to eat the bread. I'm going to maybe have something to drink. I am going to have moments where I'm not going to take away the pleasures. That's my personal opinion. Those are my pleasures. I love going out. I'm a foodie. So I will have days where I do that, but then I'll have compensation days, which is where the ground turkey and arugula salad, which is my favorite go-to compensation meal, will come into play. It is delicious, nutritious, great for your digestion, at least, again, for me. It makes a huge difference. And I make sure that I'm eating enough protein on the days that I'm going hard. You guys saw my glute days, my leg days. I will be doing more gym vlogs. So I'm not messing around with this. Alan had actually told me that I should probably be drinking more sports drinks, that amino acids are not enough because I am working out as much as I am and I'm going up in weight when I am strength training. I think for me, it's been finding that balance of compensating indulgence with healthy options on the next day or whether it be fasting the next day after indulging, but finding a balance. Because like I said, I am trying to have my gains and still keep myself toned and tight. There is a key that I wanted you guys to know, right? Especially for my C-section moms. I had tried to find different articles when I was first recovering from my C-section because my lower abdomen felt completely numb. I could not feel it. I was overdoing it in the gym. I was probably hurting myself more than I was making any progress. I wanted to feel it so bad. You know what I'm saying? And then I found an article that was by a yoga instructor and she specialized in women with diastasis recti i think it's called when your abdomen separates so all women get that a little bit some more severe than others what it is is your abdomen separates and never completely goes back together with c-section moms our abdomen has been surgically cut open i'm not going to get into the gory details it's really difficult to gain that strength back in that area that has been sliced. Again, I was numb for a very long time. 
And what worked for me is the way the yoga instructor said that you should practice this movement or breathing exercise, whatever you want to call it. Some gym enthusiasts will call this rendition on the vacuum, right? So a vacuum is like when you like, <gasps> I don't know how to vacuum, but I know how to do this. <laughs> so basically they said to visualize trying to get your belly button to touch your spine, so trying to get this to touch back here internally. So you're trying to bring your two ends together. Visualize it. Tighten. So this is me naturally. Now I'm gonna relax. I know that maybe you've seen those reels on Instagram that says maturing in the gym and then the, the person, fitness enthusiast, will say what they have learned in their process of becoming better at the gym, I guess. My point is, you don't have to be in the gym to intentionally work your muscles. My friend was laughing at me the other day because she was at my house with a jet upstairs. She was like, no, why'd you have to do that? Because I have these muscles. I love to fire them. Any chance that I get, I make sure that I make it kind of like a workout. So when I jet up the stairs, I'm like really intentionally targeting my calves, my glutes, depending. Sometimes I'll like do two steps at a time. I don't know. The point is I will do everything with the intention of targeting, firing, flexing my muscles. So this core tightening I do all the time, like when I'm chilling, when I'm watching a show, when I'm smoking, when I'm driving, I will take a moment. I think the yoga instructor had said at least 10 minutes daily, it will make a difference. That has helped me exponentially and I feel like I've slacked on it and I should do it way more. I have been so happy with the progress that I've made on my lower body and with my upper body. I feel like from where I was at, I'm so fucking proud. Like we have the ability for me to have gone to surgically get this. And I'm not perfect. I still have like, I'm not perfect. I'm not perfect. I still feel it. I still feel and see things. And I know that a doctor, I've gotten doctors hit me up in my DM, which is kind of offensive and like say that they can enhance me, whatever for free. I'm so proud of where I'm at right now that I feel like I can only imagine five years into this thing. Consistency and time is a beautiful thing. I wanted to give you guys a few of the meals that I make for myself that I find to be quote unquote healthy and that I'll eat on days that I feel like I've had a string of unhealthy eating habits. I have bad days where I fall off the wagon, if you will, and I eat pizza and drink a soda here and there and just stuff that I, I know I can do better at. So ground turkey with an arugula salad, my favorite. I've actually invested in like deli gloves just because I don't like touching the meat. I'm not telling you to make this exactly like I make it. I think the best advice I could give everybody is to try seasoning, test seasonings out. You know what I'm saying? Because ground turkey can be delicious and at this point, I've actually began to like it more than actual ground beef. And that's because I've learned to season it to my palate. Everybody's palate is a little bit differently. I love zest. I love, I know this isn't relevant, but I like the umami mushroomy flavor. Ooh, I should have made mushrooms. Squirrel. So I will put a good amount of garlic. Normally, I mean, I've made the mistake of using garlic salt before and had to throw a whole thing of turkey meat away, so only a little bit of salt because I know this sounds crazy and kind of backwards, but I do use a little bit of butter. And yeah, I know, trainers everywhere are screaming. I like a little bit of butter. A little bit of fat is not bad. We're bypassing the gluten and starches here. So let me have a little bit of butter. Mix that up. Mix it up, mix it up. Make noises. I'm just weird, guys. Obviously these gloves are not working. I should create them, like invest in little, little hand gloves. Yes, I should be wearing a hairnet, but who cares, the food's for me. Ooh, I hate when the lemon seeds drop. I wish I was bougie enough to have that little mesh they give you. I like Mastro's or those hot spot steakhouses. I use a lot of lemon, a lot. Let me pick these seeds out. I'm a cedar. Oh, there's a straggler. 
There's a straggler. Mix that real good. And I know this is gonna be crazy. Add a little bit more lemon. Okay. How about I just... I was actually shocked to find out that there are people in this world that don't like onion because one of my best friends is one of those people. <laughs> but as a Cuban, lemon and onion and garlic are like the essentials of life, just what it is. You cut the onion. I honestly considered cutting my nails and going to culinary school just because I really like cooking and I wanna pick up different habits. I will take half of the onions. Again, y'all are gonna think I'm crazy but it tastes bomb. And it's only if you like onions. So if you don't like onions, I think that you could substitute with garlic. Pick a seasoning you do like, and then, you know, use a lot of that. That's my recipe, right? When it comes to seasoning, use a lot of it. As long as it's not sodium based, because then you're assed out. So I like to let the onion kind of sit with the ground meat while it is raw. You want the pan to get really, really hot. I've learned from <laughs> watching documentaries is that you have to have patience. Like we get antsy when we're cooking, right? We want things to be done quickly. The beautiful glaze that makes or breaks up meat happens with patience. This is gonna be ground beef, but I'm gonna lay it out as a whole little plop of meat and I'm gonna let it get real crispy at the bottom because I love my ground beef round. I think that makes a huge difference in the taste and it makes it more comparable to beef. That is my opinion. I am not a chef. Take it as you want. I think I'm right. Gonna probably go. Yeah, that's what we like. Let's make the little dressing that I put on my arugula. A little bit of olive oil. Like a lot of it. You guess it, folks. Lemon. Lemon. Take a shot every time I say lemon this episode. <laughs> no, don't do that. I'm just kidding, YouTube. A little bit of lemon. Make it a little creamy, a little Dijon mustard. And then you guessed it. The black trouble salt. Okay. I think I want to flip it. Let me see how the bottom is looking. I'm going to flip it. Ready and flip. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. So that browning, that glaze is what you like. Add the extra onions around because I have an onion fetish. That's a thing, YouTube hashtag onion fetishes. I'm here for you. Okay, so we're gonna let that brown a little bit. I am a big arugula fan. I know that that is a, a contested idea because a lot of people aren't. It is a very peppery taste. It's an acquired taste. And some people aren't gonna like it. But for me, I think it is so delicious and just so different. And it, it makes the regular salad. It just boils your main out of the water is what we're seeing. Is this washed? Washed and ready to eat. Still gonna wash it. I think it's just about right. And the way I like to cook it is the bottom getting glazed. It is. And I think I'm gonna start breaking it up. Breaking it up. Song sold separately. All right, now I'm gonna take it off the stove because it's way too hot. And the thing about turkey is that it will cook so fast. You'll go from juicy meat to powder. I don't want to get it all together, but as you can see, we have meat that is, in my opinion, very comparable to ground beef. It looks delicious. Like, I'm jealous of myself and I'm about to eat it. It's so good. And it's nice and browned. Guess what we're going to add a little bit more of? Take a guess. Lemon. Yeah. Little dressing. Some people like to put Parmesan in their arugula. I'm not a huge Parmesan fan sometimes. I have to like be in the mood. Now I understand why like people do it with their hand because I feel like you could direct it better and make sure that you don't overdo it. Ooh, that 
high steam. It is so good. I wish y'all knew how good this is. And if you're an onion fan, you see how nice and caramelized these onions are. Some of them. Some of them are still a little undercooked, but that's okay. I think that that kind of adds to the flavor palette, right? Some of them are a little more oniony. Okay. A portion like this. I will normally break down, and again, I'll have this like on a leg day. I'll break it down into two, three. I could really like snack on it all day. For me, smaller portion size, more portions uh, throughout my day. That's just like how I told you I eat very little. Like, I don't know, my appetite sucks. And that's that I'm a smoker. So you can imagine. It's very, very, very weird, but my appetite is pretty strange. My trainer has told me more throughout the day, especially on a day where I've had like a vigorous workout to get a good amount of protein in, to eat my greens, to make sure I'm drinking water. And yeah, so I have like half of this or a quarter of it with the salad and then I'll have another bit of it later, which is what I do. I am obviously recording this on different days. The ground turkey and arugula, I tend to use the amount of arugula that you saw. I will sometimes eat them separately, but for the most part, what makes it extra delicious is when you actually just mix them together. And I will portion size the way that you saw that small bowl of arugula, I'll use that bowl and I'll just add the ground and I'll just mix it together and it is so delicious. That is all for today. So I will see you guys next Wednesday. And as always, please be safe, have an open heart, and reach out to me. Tell me what you want to see next. I don't know. What you want? Tell me what you want. Bye, guys.